You know, it feels like we're always chasing the latest and greatest tech, right? But honestly, there's this special kind of thrill you get from breathing new life into old hardware. So today, we're going to jump into a classic debate in the home lab community. What is the absolute best way to make a 14-year-old server not just useful, but maybe even powerful again? So let's meet the star of our show, the Frankenbox. Yeah, it's a 14-year-old server, but don't let the age fool you. It's hiding some serious potential. I mean, check this out. We're talking dual Xeon processors. That's 12 cores and 24 threads, a hefty 64 gigs of RAM, and a modern SSD to keep things snappy. So yeah, it's not exactly brand new, but it's definitely not ready for the scrap heap either. And that's where we hit our big question. If you want to run a modern OS like Windows 11 on this beast, which way do you go? Do you install it directly onto the hardware, what we call bare metal? Or do you use something called a hypervisor, like Proxmox, to run it inside a virtual machine? This, my friends, is the great home lab debate. All right, let's kick things off with Proxmox. In the community, this thing is legendary. People call it the Tinker's Swiss Army Knife, and for good reason. See, this approach isn't just about running one operating system, it's about building a super flexible platform for pretty much any project you can dream up. And this slide, well, it really lays out the two schools of thought perfectly. On one side, you have Proxmox, the Tinker's Playground. It's all about maximum flexibility, being able to run multiple different systems all at once. And on the other side, you have bare metal, that's the purest choice, built for one thing and one thing only, squeezing every last drop of performance out of a single OS. Okay, so what is Proxmox, really? Well, think of it like a super smart manager that sits right on top of your server's hardware. It lets you slice up all that hardware, the CPU, the RAM, the storage, into smaller virtual pieces. This means you can run multiple, totally separate operating systems all at the same time on the same machine. And you know the best part? It's completely free and open source. So why is everyone so obsessed with it? Well, with Proxmox, you can take a snapshot, which is basically like a magic undo button for your entire system. If something breaks, you can roll back in seconds. You can do full backups, create really complex virtual networks, and even run these super lightweight containers for small apps. You get total, fine-grained control over everything. It is a power user's absolute dream. And this quote from the community, it just nails it. Proxmox is incredibly powerful and, honestly, shockingly efficient, as long as you use it for what it's designed for, which is managing a bunch of virtual systems. When you play to its strengths, it's fast, it's lean, and it gets you surprisingly close to that bare metal speed. Okay, now let's completely switch gears and look at the other side of this. If Proxmox is that versatile Swiss Army knife, then a bare metal install, well, that's a drag racer. It's not trying to be clever or flexible. It's built for one thing and one thing only, pure raw speed. This right here, this is the mic drop for the bare metal crowd. And honestly, it's just a fundamental law of computing. Every extra software layer you put between your operating system and the actual hardware is going to introduce at least a tiny bit of overhead. For pure unadulterated speed, nothing beats going direct. And you know, the logic behind it is just, it's beautifully simple. If your only goal is to run a single Windows machine, why bother adding a whole extra layer of complexity with a hypervisor? Why take the scenic route when a straight line is right there? For a lot of people, that kind of simplicity is the most elegant solution of all. Ah, but here's the big what if, right? Here's the powerful counter argument. What if your needs change? Sure, today you just want a Windows machine, but what about tomorrow? Suddenly, you might want to spin up a media server or a network-wide ad blocker like a pie hole, or maybe a safe little sandbox to test out some weird software. Proxmox gives you that room to grow. It future-proofs your setup. Okay, so we've heard the philosophy from both camps. It's a great debate. But now, it's time for a big old dose of reality. Because let's be honest, at the end of the day, we are still dealing with some seriously old hardware here. And yeah, the community, they did not hold back. This comment gets straight to the point. You just can't expect a CPU that was designed over a decade ago to give you modern performance. It's so important to keep your expectations in check. And here it is, folks, the bottleneck. 2.13 gigahertz. There's no fancy turbo boost to give it a kick when you need it. So even with all those cores, the actual speed for any single task is just, well, it's slow. This was a mid-range chip back when it was new, let alone today. And just to make things even more interesting, Microsoft's official position is basically, nope, 
Not gonna work. Windows 11 has these really strict requirements for your CPU and a security feature called a Trusted Platform Module, or TPM. This old server has none of that. So, by the book, this install should be dead on arrival. But come on, this is the home lab world. Official requirements are more like suggestions. For this community, a roadblock is just a fun little challenge. There are all these well-known workarounds, from tweaking the install files to making a quick change in the registry that basically tells Windows, hey, don't worry about it. It's a classic tinkerer's move. And you know, all of this, it brings us to what this is really all about. We've been talking about performance and specs and speed, but maybe that's the completely wrong way to look at this whole thing. Maybe it was never about the speed at all. I mean, let's be real for a second. Nobody is firing up this old server expecting to break any speed records. The real goal, the real value, is in the process itself. It's all about that joy of actually building something, of figuring out how systems work, of experimenting, and yeah, breaking stuff, and then learning how to fix it. This quote just sums up that whole home lab vibe perfectly. Look, it admits the flaws, right? Your power bill is not gonna be happy, but it gets the point. This isn't a perfect server, but it is a perfectly educational one. It's a great setup for learning. So where do we land after all this? What's the final call? Well, it really just comes down to what you want to do. If you want maximum flexibility, if you're here to learn and you want a platform for all your future projects, then Proxmox is, without a doubt, the smart move. But if all you care about is raw, single OS speed, then bare metal is your answer. And that really leaves us with one last question to chew on. We've been talking about a server this whole time, but this idea is so much bigger. So take a look around. What forgotten piece of tech do you have collecting dust in a closet that, with just a little bit of creativity, you could give a brand new purpose?